I, um, this, this, is, um, this is an open letter to Sami Jaja, a Lebanon uh, war era militia commander turned post-war politician who actually reinvented himself as a, as a sovereignist party militant and unfortunately later morphed into a poet and a sloganeer and purveyor of silly proverbs and, and poetic platitudes <laughs> in, in a cringy, stilted fusha, uh, sort of like, you know, one of his favorite uh, slogans. Yes, we can. Yes, we will. We will soil our pants. Uh, that's for sure. Um, this is also a, a response to Slaiman Frangi's benighted uh, Arabist discourse of the past few months is really uh, nauseating to to listen to him and and read his tweets in also in elevated uh, modern standard Arabic. Uh, this guy is a uh, Maronite feudal lord. He's a presidential hopeful. Uh, he had his political uh, formation in the Assad family slaughterhouse. Uh, in the company of street thugs like uh, Basil al-Assad, who is his uh, his guiding light. Um, and a, he's also a good friend of uh, that criminal, Basil's uh, younger brother, who is uh, cutting his teeth pretty well in this crime family, the physician uh, uh, Bashar al-Assad, the current uh, butcher of Damascus. Um, it is therefore no surprise um, Watching uh, Slaiman Frangi's moral promiscuity um, and and uh, um, uh, leaving us prey to assaulting us with his cringy Arabist uh, virtue signaling, displaying his buffoonish grasp of Lebanese history and Lebanese identity in an Arabic also that is laughable. Uh, to, well, today is um, May 11th. I just read a tweet by him. Um, uh, repeating his uh, uh, his late grandfather's slogan, "Watani da'iman ala haq." My nation is always on the right path, always correct, always right. Here are some elements of Slamin Frangi's uh, clown town uh, historical literacy. I'm not going to get into his actual literacy or lack thereof, but but here's you know farce number one. He's a Maronite member of the Aramaic-speaking Syriac pre-modern National Church of Lebanon, but he fabricates for himself and Lebanon an imaginary Arab lineage. This would be analogous to an English-speaking member of the pre-modern National Church of England, say King Charles II, not that I'm comparing uh, royal Chuck with an obscene half-literate feudal chieftain, like Slaimin Frangiye, but making the claim that members of the Syriac pre-modern National Church of Lebanon are Arab would be like claiming English-speaking members of uh, the pre-modern National Church of England are French. I don't know how many uh, of you watched the coronation of King Charles the the, the, the third, um, but at one point uh, the uh, the person uh, coronating him. Um, uh, the the Archbishop of Canterbury actually kneels and pays allegiance to him uh, as the the uh, the head and protector of the National Church of England, the Anglican Church. So this is farce one about uh, this um, Maronite thug Slaiman Frangi uh, fancying himself a. Um, uh, an, an Arab and and uh, 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 sort of uh, blanketing uh, the Maronite community into into that um, invented uh, term. This is farce number one. Farce number two. Uh, Slamin Frangi is member. Indeed, he is the uh, chieftain, the leader of the Marada movement, um, another Lebanese war era. A feudal militia that takes its name from early Christians of northern Mount Lebanon, where he is from, the Marada, the Merdeites, uh, who are most probably originally ethnic Armenians from uh, 
the Anatolian plains. Um, and those Merdeites, the Marada, were notorious for having actually viciously fought the Arab conquerors and repelled them from Mount Lebanon. And yet this character feels justified, this character, Slamin Franji, feels justified fabricating uh, for the Marada, the historical Marada, and by association by osmosis, his own Marada, uh, fabricating for them an imaginary Arab lineage. One last note on, on this farce. The flag of the Marada movement consists of a circle emblazoned in the middle with the, uh, the Greek letter pi. Now ask Slaiman what it means, and I bet he knows uh, about the origins of pi as much as I do. But in any case, uh, pi is a constant, uh, right? It's a mathematical constant. He doesn't doesn't seem to to understand what pi means and why is it pi, for instance, if he's an Arab and the Marada are Arab and not Dodd. So go figure. And finally, farce number <laughs> number three, um, and there is the rub. Um, Slamin Frangie's last name Frangie reveals a Frankish descent, uh, like the names of many families of the Lebanese mountains. Uh, some of whom Franks, who retreated to uh, the mountain sanctuary after the dismantlement of the crusader uh, Outremer in the 14th century. So the patronym uh, patronymic uh, Frangie uh, reveals unequivocally Christian, not to say Frankish, origins. And yet, flying in the face of linguistic and historical evidence, uh, little Slayman is cocksure he is Arab, and again, by osmosis, he Arabizes the Maronites and Lebanon. Well, Slayman is indeed an Arab, if that's what floats his boat, uh, but Lebanon is not. Despite what is rattling inside uh, Slayman's roomy uh, cranial cavity, uh, Lebanon is a cultural space that has behind it 20 centuries of Christendom, and I'm saying Christendom here so as not to uh, rattle the gold medalists of the oppression Olympics uh, with the trigger word Christian Christianity, but yes, Lebanon is a cultural space that has behind it 20 centuries of Christianity and 20 centuries prior of humanist paganism, Phoenicianism to be exact. Pope. Uh, that's what Lebanon is. Uh, it's not Arab. It's not Eastern. It's not Persian. It's not Muslim. It's not anything extrinsic to its nature. Lebanon is part and parcel of the Mediterranean universe with deeply anchored Phoenician roots. Lebanon is a civilization uh, that broke the barbarism of the Bronze Age. And I'm borrowing here a uh, an image uh, from Michael Bonner's recent uh, monograph on civilization. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Phoenicians illuminated, in the description of Bonner, illuminated the Mediterranean world uh, through the torch that they carried uh, around its basin. Indeed, Bonner writes, and I quote, the supremacy of Rome would have been unthinkable without the unity of the Mediterranean uh, first achieved by the merchants of Phoenicia when Rome overcame Carthage, he writes, and destroyed it uh, in uh, 146 BC. Uh, um, Rome inherited the Mediterranean as a Phoenician, and I say as a Lebanese cultural and economic bequest. Indeed, concludes Bonner, in later times, uh, Rome had been to the barbarians of Europe what the Phoenicians had been to the Romans themselves in earlier times, the teachers of the teachers of humanity, um, uh, to borrow from Sa'id Al's Mu'allimu uh, Mu'allimi al uh, And yet, uh, you get lobotomized politicians and feudal leaders uh, in Lebanon bending over backwards to every other hegemon of the day, telling you without the blink of an eye that Lebanon is everything except itself and its history. Well, newsflash to the little genius, little Slaymane. Lebanon and the Lebanese are a sui generis. Uh, they are a product of a distinct human geology, a distinct 
history molded by geography and a distinct national genius that could not have been anything else and that could not have been replicated any place else other than in Lebanon. So Lebanon is the spawn of history and geography. It is a millennial body of languages, values, traditions. It is how history and geography define it, not what Suleyman Frangiye says and not what Samir Jaja says or uh, uh, lectures us in, uh, in modern standard Arabic in, uh, in Fusha. Lebanon is a mode of being and doing and eating and drinking and celebrating. It is music and art and architecture. It is a mode of speaking and, 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 and thinking. It is a symphony of uh, literature and ideas and intellectual traditions, a subtlety of spirit, a savoir-faire, a savoir-vivre, a savoir-dire. Lebanon is a rich gastronomy, an enthralling landscape, a form of cultural suppleness and elegance, a particular language uh, that is an imbrication of languages with a particular psychology and music all its own. It is a kind of kindness and openness and hospitality to the world. It is uh, Kadmus and Europa and uh, Alpian and, and Fakhreddin and Bashir and Charles Korm and Khalil Gibran and Nadia Twaini and, and, and Charles Melik. And so Samir Jaja's choice uh, is between continuing to prattle nonsense like Suleyman Frangiye, sort of to counter Suleyman Frangiye in a souk uqaz type of uh, reciting uh, useless poetry and, and slogans. So he has a choice between continuing on that path, bravo, uh, or getting an education. Um, the choice uh, is also continuing uh, to comment the catastrophe uh, that is Leb uh, that Lebanon is slipping into, like Samir Jaja does with his again his silly platitudes and jingles and speechifying. So continue commenting the tragedy, uh, folks, uh, or do something. Politicians are by definition parasites. They come after the fact and feed on what is uh, already in place, what already has been put in place. Uh, politics and politicians are not agents of change. Uh, uh, if uh, change is uh, yeah, your lodestar, Dr. Samir Jaja, don't be a politician. Uh, politics and politicians are actually symptoms of what's already in place. As I said before, they are not transformers. They are not agents of change, but they're indeed symptoms and symbols of what's already been transformed. Uh, politics and Politicians are enablers and enforcers of their own self-serving and self-perpetuating status quo. Freedom, sovereignty, and change are not the craft of politicians. Politiciens, as uh, Charles de Gaulle called them. Uh, <laughs> freedom, uh, sovereignty, and change uh, are not a multiple choice quiz. They are not a game whereby one chooses the best out of multiple possibilities. Uh, freedom and sovereignty uh, are you, Samir Jaja, making your will a possibility, not choosing of what is available, okay? Uh, freedom is a creative possibility of your own making. It is an élan vital, to use a phrase by uh, Henri uh, Bergson, uh, Henry Bergson. Uh, it's, it's an invitation to dissent from the seemingly ineluctable, the seemingly unchangeable. Being a politician like you, Dr. Jaja, um, a speechifier and a sloganeer is not dissent. Uh, sort of sloganeering to counter uh, the, 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 the favored presidential uh, uh, candidate right now, uh, little Slayman. So, so speechifying to counter what he says and what he does is not dissent. There is no élan vital uh, in what you are doing and what you are saying currently. Your job is to walk ahead of the crowd, to lead, not to speechify and versify. Read Henri Bergson and uh, get back to us. All right? Thank you, sir. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, little slay man. Bye-bye.